the college football week 10 preview. I ask a lot of questions about the weekend that is coming up. We are going to dive into all of them. And let's start off with this, of course. We do have, right down the times, the biggest brand games. Which games this weekend will get the highest ratings? Which games will be the most talked about, etc.? And I think this is easy. Tennessee at Georgia It is number one with a bullet. I mean, it's just an absolute knockout. This is the one that's going to get the highest ratings of the weekend. I think it's going to be a close game. I think the atmosphere around this ball game in Sanford Stadium, I think, is going to be huge. Georgia hasn't had a game like this since Notre Dame came in there back in 2019, 2018, whatever it was. Uh, massive, massive spot. So, I I look forward to seeing this. Uh, Alabama at LSU is game number two that I think will have the highest ratings. I know that it is on cable. Kirk Herbstreet, Chris Fowler are going to be in Death Valley for this one, so they've got the number one broadcasting team there. It's a huge, huge spot. Huge spot. I know that it's going up against Florida State and Miami, but really, I mean, what are we talking about here? Uh, I think Alabama LSU is going to draw huge numbers, especially after watching the SEC East situation. If LSU beats Alabama, I mean, they are, they got a straight shot to the SEC West title. If Alabama wins, still got to get through Ole Miss next week. So it changes the ramifications for games next week. Uh, I, I like it. I think it's going to be a huge spot. If it's if it's close at all, Alabama LSU could be, eh, it's not going to be more highly rated than Tennessee Georgia. Let's not get crazy. But regardless, it's going to be a lot of people watching this. There's nothing that brings ratings more than a close game against Alabama. Just saying. Clemson at Notre Dame. Yeah, NBC game. Uh, I think it's number three on this list. You know, Notre Dame fans, Clemson fans, etc. They they will get into this. But again, this is a channel that you don't normally watch college football on. The vast majority of the country does not watch college football on NBC. You watch Notre Dame because you either love them or you hate them. And that's about it. But this is a huge matchup. Could be really, really good for them. Uh, I'm very interested. Very interested in this one. We will see what ends up going on with that. I think number four is going to be Ohio State at Northwestern. It's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be disgusting. It's at Ryan Field in Evanston. I know it's going to be bad. But Ohio State brings numbers every single time out. This one, I believe, is on ABC, and it's a noon Eastern time kick. Not a lot of competition. You're going to have a lot of Ohio State fans watch. That's just bottom line. Texas Tech at TCU. This one, of course, big noon kick on Fox. That has become a prime window. People turn it on to Fox for the morning show, the game show, uh, game day show, whatever it is, excuse me. Um, and then they keep the TV on that channel. I think this has the chance of being maybe a, a pretty competitive ball game. We'll see what ends up happening with it. Obviously, Texas Tech, it's very high variance. Anything can happen when that bunch gets on the field. But that one, I think, is number five here. Number six, Florida State at Miami. Of course, another night game. Um, it's a rivalry. It's brand name helmets. You know, this is a helmet game. Bottom line, Mario Cristobal against Mike Norvell, interesting matchup. I think it could be a bloodbath, but we'll see. Uh, I've got Florida at Texas A&M. This is another early game. This one's on ESPN. Two huge fan bases, both of them trying to figure out what exactly is going to go on. One, certainly building for the future. Uh, A&M trying to figure out how to pick up the pieces right now and get this thing back rounded into shape. And then finally, I've got Kansas at Tech, uh, excuse me, Texas at Kansas State. This one's on FS1 uh, in the evening. I think it will be the highest-rated FS1 game that they have had in quite some time. Um, this should be a very, very interesting ball game. You know, Texas favored by just a little bit there uh, after Kansas State just absolutely ripped it off of Oklahoma State last week. Uh, line's a little fishy. Line's a little weird right there. Moving along, write the times down here. The most exciting games... Which games will be the closest this week? Of course, I've got Tennessee at Georgia number one. Not going to spend long on that one. Houston at SMU could certainly be interesting this week. I personally have watched SMU multiple times. I don't think they're a very good football team. Houston, also not a great football team, but this is a team that's improving. Houston is a dog by three points on the road here. I, I mean, I said it on the college football show. I tend to like Houston here. I think it's going to be tight. 
These are rifles. So I, I think this will be a tight ball game here. Florida at Texas A&M. You want to talk about exciting. Like, Florida is a football team that, one, overall the offense is not great. But they can be insanely explosive with Anthony Richardson. And that A&M defense, it's not exactly a brick wall that you're running into there. So there's a, there's a chance for almost anything to happen in this ballgame. Texas at Kansas State, I already mentioned that one. But, yeah, at Deuce Vaughn, it looks like Adrian Martinez may play. Um, you got big things with this. So I, I think Texas at Kansas State is going to be a huge, huge spot. Uh, and then, of course, most exciting games. I do have Alabama at LSU there. Uh, probably should have put UCF at Memphis on this one, but we'll talk about it here in just a little bit. But, yeah, Alabama at LSU I think could be really, really exciting. Any game that Bryce Young and Jaden Daniels are involved in, certainly, certainly could be very exciting. Which teams have the most to gain and the most to lose this weekend? Obviously, we're going to put Tennessee-Georgia here. Uh, the winner probably going to win the SEC East. Probably, you know, headed to the college football playoff. The loser, not exactly in the best situation, right? So a lot to gain, a lot to lose for both of these teams. Uh, neither one of them is really being knocked out of the playoff conversation with a loss here. But it just makes it that much more difficult to get in, right? Alabama at LSU. The winner it takes the lead in the SEC West race. The loser probably gets knocked out of the SEC West race. So, something to pay attention to there. Texas, Kansas State, already talked about that. Um, Texas has already got three losses on the season. You take a fourth before you even play Baylor or TCU, and, yeah, then you start worrying about your, your job if you're Steve Sarkeesian. Um, you've got plenty of talent on this roster. You should not have... I understand the loss to... Alabama, totally understandable. You can law you could lose to either Oklahoma State or Texas Tech, probably not both of them in the same season. But you lose to Kansas State, and then you go lose to one of those either uh, TCU or whoever else. Like the win over Oklahoma helps, mm, not that much. Uh, you looking at a five win or a, excuse me, a five loss season, maybe a six loss season. That's not going to go well. So Kansas State by the way, can also maintain their lead in the Big 12 as far as the Big 12 championship race is concerned. Uh, UCF at Memphis, most to gain, most to lose. UCF got a huge win over Cincinnati. That loss to ECU hurts at this point. Uh, you have to win this game if you want to stay in the AAC race. You still got Houston sitting there with one loss. You still got Cincinnati sitting there with one loss. And you got Tulane with no losses. If you're Memphis... You got a lot to lose because you need to win a game like this. If you're Ryan Silverfield, you need to have momentum. This one's at home. It's on homecoming. You have got to find a way to win this game. Bottom line. Uh, Iowa at Purdue, as far as most to gain, most to lose. Purdue, I don't know if you realize this, is still in the race for the Big Ten West. Now, this game is going to be wet. It's going to be windy. There's going to be all kinds of stuff going on in this one. So, who knows? But if you're Purdue, you need to find a way to win this ballgame. I understand the Iowa offense isn't great, but that Iowa team is much more built for weather conditions than the Purdue offense is. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, Purdue, as it sits, very, very close to getting that. that they, they have to play Illinois still. So, if you are Purdue, you got a chance here. You could win the West, but you got to get this one done at home. Uh, who are the most likely double-digit underdogs that could win outright this weekend? This is where it gets a little tricky. I don't see a lot of them that I have very much faith in whatsoever. First one I'm going to bring up, Michigan State plus 17 at Illinois. I understand everything that happened last week. I know all of this. I know what's going on. They lost a, a massive, the, probably their best defensive player due to suspension. They got absolutely embarrassed by a really good defense last week, and I think this Illinois defense could be better than what Michigan's throwing out there. However, you want to talk about rallying the troops? Yeah, Mel Tucker could probably do that. The thing that typically has beaten 
Michigan State is teams throwing against their secondary. Do you really trust Tommy DeVito to do that? Mm, I, I, I don't know that I do. Uh, we have seen Illinois turn the football over four times in a game already this year. Illinois has already lost to Indiana. Now, I know that this team has got a lot of things in their favor, but it's not like they have beaten just a slew of really, really good teams. Let's uh, let's pull up the schedule, actually, while I'm while I'm looking at it. Um, I The teams that Illinois has beaten, Wyoming, Virginia, Chattanooga, Wisconsin, they beat Iowa 9-6. to uh, They beat Minnesota 26-14. to uh, And that was, I believe, that Tanner Morgan was out for that ballgame. Uh, they beat Nebraska last week, and I believe Casey Thompson got lost at one point. Um, it's not like they've beaten like a bunch of really, really good football teams. The defense has been dynamic. They have been outstanding. But the offense still may be leaving a little bit to be desired. So would it shock you? If Peyton Thorne found a way to hit up, uh, who is it, Keon Clark? Wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't shock me. I think that you can find ways uh, to score on Illinois. You can find ways to make turnovers happen. Uh, we'll see. So I don't think that's absolutely crazy. Uh, I, I still think Illinois probably the right side here because of the defense. Uh, but we've seen crazier things rally a team uh, aside from having eight guys suspended and having a fight happen and all that, like maybe you got some some locker room nuisances out of there. Who knows? Like I'm not, I'm certainly not suggesting that. But what I'm saying is there is a chance that Michigan State could actually be better because of what happened last week. The next game, as far as double digit underdogs that could win outright, UCLA at Arizona State. Arizona State plus ten and a half here. Uh, this Arizona State team, it can be pretty explosive on offense especially after the coaching change, they have found ways to score. You saw what they did at home against Washington. UCLA's defense is not great by any stretch of the imagination. A lot of their games have been at home thus far. If you get them riled up, the only time that UCLA has gone on the road, it's been twice now. They went to Colorado, and they went to Oregon. If you have any kind of a fan base, If you have any kind of an intimidating environment at home, Arizona State could find a way to pull this thing out. Just throwing it out there. I don't believe it'll happen. I think UCLA is a really, really good football team. But if you have those road home splits, mm, it could get tricky for UCLA. Uh, And then finally, third one I've got on here is Liberty plus 13.5. There's not a lot of double-digit dogs this week. I will tell you that. There's not a ton of them. But... uh, Maybe maybe there's a way that Hugh Freeze draws up some some plays against this Arkansas defense. This Arkansas defense giving up explosive play after explosive play right now, and that's about all that Liberty can do. They are not great as far as a consistent success rate on offense, but they can hit you with explosive passes, and it really doesn't matter uh, who is playing quarterback for them. Although I will say there are rumors. I believe Hugh Freeze actually said it. It may not be a rumor anymore. He said that Bennett is dealing with flu-like symptoms uh, this week. So, Charlie Brewer is not ready to be back yet. Caden Salter is still dealing with his injury. You could be down to a four-string quarterback if you're Liberty. So, if that is the case, maybe this thing goes up beyond 14. Uh, But this is a sandwich spot for Arkansas. Something to pay attention to. Arkansas has LSU last or next week. Um, Just something to, uh, to watch out for. The G5 games of the week are as follows. Houston at SMU, already talked about that one. UCF at Memphis, we talked about that. Air Force versus Army. Exactly how bad is this Army defense? And can they show any sign of improvement against Air Force this week? That's what I am incredibly interested in seeing, is what exactly is Army, especially going against a team that, one, they know incredibly well, and two, uh, that they, they know how to beat. I mean, they're 4-1 and one against them in the last five. So, I'm, I'm very interested in that one. Of course, it's in the Texas Rangers ballpark down in Arlington. Not a great place to play football from what I understand, but, yeah, we'll see. BYU at Boise. Uh, I think that that's more of a helmet game for me. I like this one quite a bit. Uh, two teams heading in completely different directions. We'll see what Kalani Sataki and his bunch can uh, scrounge up here in this ballgame. But uh, instilling 
or installing Dirk Cutter as the offensive coordinator along with the quarterback Green has been a uh, a welcome change for the Broncos. App State and Coastal, of course, is Thursday night. That is tonight. If you're watching the show on YouTube, well, you're about to watch this ball game. If you are listening to the podcast, it's already happened. Uh, App State's offensive line is awesome. Coastal's defensive line, their front seven, not very good. We'll see if App State decides to hold on to the football for like 45 minutes. <laughs> we'll see if that's what ends up happening. I would imagine that's what it is. That's why I don't have a pelly on the game. South Alabama at Georgia Southern, I think, could be very, very interesting. South Alabama still in the Sun Belt West race. Georgia Southern has this habit of beating teams as an underdog. What Clay Helton has done there in his first season has been really impressive. I'm I'm shocked by this team sometimes. But uh, if they don't turn the football over, they got a good chance to win that ball game. They're a four-point dog there. Troy at Louisiana is the last one that I'm going to talk about. This is a Sun Belt West matchup. I like what they are doing. I think this is a really, really good team. Um, I like Troy a, a lot. That defense is just so, so good. Louisiana, eh, finicky. If they turn the football over, eh, they, they're going to have problems, certainly. Uh, Woolbridge turned off, uh, turned over the ball, I believe, three times against Southern Miss. Led to a lot of points. Uh, you got you to gotta see what's going to happen here. Because that Southern Miss offense isn't good. Troy, I think, one, is not good either. But they can find ways to get points on the board, especially if you're going to give them short fields. So, a very, very big game as far as the Sunbelt West is concerned. I've got a Troy Futures ticket to win that division. I need that to cash. I need that to cash. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.